How's it going, Rams? Welcome back from the break. I'm Lee Tuscastro, filling in for Jared Stratton. Oh, I miss him too, don't worry. But we still have all the sports info covered for you. So without further ado, let's get rolling with it. Starting off on a high note, the men's basketball team was able to end their three-game losing streak when they traveled to San That's Jose State now. last night and came away with the victory 91-70 over the Spartans. The highest scorer of the Spartans was Seneca Knight, who managed to make seven baskets for 14 points for his team. However, this was not enough to compete with the big numbers being put up from the Rams side with six CSU members being able to have double-digit point counts in the game. The main leaders were Chris Martin with 19 points and even Nico Carvacho getting the double-double to his name with 18 points and 19 rebounds. This marks the eighth time in a row that the men's team has defeated San Jose State on their home turf and they will look to carry that momentum forward in their rematch against Wyoming on Saturday afternoon. Despite the men's win, the women's basketball team did not have the same success as the men did. Also facing San Jose State last night in Moby Arena, the Rams started strong with the lead early in the first quarter. However, the Spartans were able to pull it back and hold on to a lead that the Rams were eventually never able to come back from. The story of the night seemed to be in the scoring game where the Rams could not put up the points that they needed. CSU missed three quarters of the 36 three-point shots that they took, which would make sense considering they seemed to check out for the last three quarters of the game. CSU would eventually fall 70-78 against the Spartans. The Rams will need to pull it together when they, face, when they also face Wyoming on Saturday. If you watched our Monday Night Sports Show, you might know that the women's golf team wasn't doing so hot to start off the spring season. The men's golf team looked to avoid the same story yesterday when they faced off against DU in a dual match in California. The day went so long that they couldn't even finish the second match due, it, due to it being too dark. Nonetheless, the Rams were able to come away victorious on their first day back since November, being led by sophomore Parathicorn Suyastri, who shot three under 69, taking the top spot in the duel. The Rams will hope to continue their winning trend as they compete in the Wyoming Desert Intercollegiate Friday through Sunday. All right, in honor of Jared, I'm going to give it my go at the one minute challenge where he tries to fit in as much sports news as he can in one minute. So let's get that timer rolling. Starting us off, college basketball in chaos after Zion Williamson went down with a knee injury early in last night's game when Duke was playing against, against rival North Carolina. This puts a worry on his contract with Nike as he still has eight more years to go with that. At the same time, there is also talks of the NBA at draft being lowered from 19 to 18 years old, which would be big news for any young college stars such as Zion Williamson who are becoming national news. Speaking of the NBA, the second half of the season is starting up and the Nuggets have managed to stay in second place in the West. Now on to the NFL, Le'Veon Bell is home free from the Steelers and looking to see if another team will steal his heart. Moving over to the MLB, Manny Machado settled for money over championships, signing a 10-year $300 million contract with the San Diego Padres, which also gives star Bryce Harper the opening to also get a big contract with the Phillies, being the biggest pusher for him right now. Looking at the NHL, history was made at the Pepsi Center this week, where A.J. Greer and Andrew Agazzino of the Colorado Avalanche were able to score their first NHL goals of their careers. Oh, I don't know how he does that. Goodness gracious. That was, that was rough. All right, Rams, that's all I have for sports, but stay tuned because uh, when we come back, we have Lauren Orcutt bringing us the story of what happened to the Collegian, or excuse me, the, <laughs> excuse me, uh, when she brings you the entertainment up next. <laughs> 